Hello everybody and welcome to Yomitry. I'm Adele and today we're going to learn all about castles. How exciting is that? Before we do, uh, we'll get ready to begin as we always do. So I've got my bells. I want you to sit in a comfortable or easy position. Have your, your back straight but your shoulders relaxed. Your hands relaxed relaxing or resting on your knee and when you hear the bells do a big deep breath in and then out and then just listen and breathe normally okay close your eyes ready to listen say our special yoga word to welcome us all here today. You ready? Namaste. Welcome everybody. So let's see if we can warm up first. Again using the song we always use with our uh, feet together, hold our toes and sit up tall. See if you can flap your butterfly wings to stretch your muscles of your legs and your back have your arms strong and straight so that you can hold that position. Fly like a butterfly, fly like a butterfly, fly like a butterfly in the sky. Fly like a butterfly, fly like a butterfly, fly like a butterfly in the sky. Can we sleep like a butterfly? See how far uh, down you can bring your head into a comfortable position. Sleep like a butterfly, sleep like a butterfly, sleep like a butterfly through the night. Sleep like a butterfly, sleep like a butterfly, sleep like a butterfly through the night. And can you stretch out your arms and dance? Dance like a butterfly, dance like a butterfly, dance like a butterfly up so high. Dance like a butterfly, dance like a butterfly, dance like a butterfly up so high. So today we're learning all about castles. And before we start our adventure properly, we're going to just think about the shape of a castle and do some breathing uh, and learn some castle words. So if you stand up with your legs in mountain pose, so just feet just a little bit apart and strong like a mountain or in this case a castle. So your legs are straight and strong, your back is tall, your shoulders are relaxed and your hands are on your heart. And if you think about the battlements at the top of the castle and around the tower. You have bits that are high and bits that are low and bits that are high and bits that are low going around the top of the castle. And these bits have special names. The whole thing is called a crenellated wall or, the, or these are crenellations. And the, the gap or the hole that you could look through in the lower part of the wall is the crenel. And then the higher part that you could hide behind if you didn't want someone to see you is the merlon. So we're going to see if we can breathe like those parts of the castle. So we start with our hands on our hearts and breathe in like the lower part of the castle wall, the crenel. And when we breathe out, we're going to raise our arms while we breathe out to make the merlon, the higher part of those battlements or crenellations. So we breathe in and we breathe out and we breathe in and we breathe out and we breathe in and we breathe out those were our battlement tops to the castle or our crenellations well done everybody and I hope the breathing helped you to feel nice and calm and ready for listening. So let's be a tower, okay? Just like we did before, but this time we're going to spread our fingers like our fingers are the battlements on the top. 
we've got our legs a little bit wider apart we're going to be very strong and steady and we're just going to raise our hands straight up in the air and stretch up as high as we can well done to be the tower now at the top of the tower there might be a flag with the the um, the knight's colours on it, the things he might wear on his shield. So to be a flag, we're going to have our feet just a little bit apart and imagine our body is the flagpole. Uh, and then we're going to see, can we uh, tip down one side and raise our arm up? And can you even stretch in a lovely side stretch over your head and sweep your arm side to side like a flag waving in the wind and you should feel it stretch all up here and then we're going to go down the other side so we're going to slowly tip back up arm straight up and overhead and waving your arm up and over in your stretch back and over in your stretch like a flag on the tower at the top of the castle okay some of the towers would have a more pointed top and might be even taller than the rest. So let's see if we can be a tall tower. Now I want you to be with your feet just a little bit apart. Actually, you're too close together, you'd be too wobbly. But we're going to see if we can go even taller this time, right up on our tiptoes. You can make a point for the top of your tower and stretch your arms straight up as tall as you can. And then can you raise up on your tiptoes and balance because the tower wouldn't wobble and if you are wobbly just go back down again and try again see if you can balance right up on your tiptoes but still and strong well done everybody okay so around the outside of our castle there would always be trees lots of trees to help hide uh, soldiers maybe to help in a battle so that an enemy might not see them uh, coming. So woodlands and trees. So let's see if we can be a tree. Standing tall, uh, one leg rooted or glued to the floor so it's like a tree, tree trunk. The other up on your tiptoes, turned out to the side and then make your body tall, squeeze your tummy muscles, everything strong. And to start with my hands on my heart and remember we talk about looking at a fixed spot so you can stare straight ahead if you're looking at me uh, on a screen and you stare straight ahead and you try not to look around you because as soon as you do you wobble so we're ready we lift our toes can we place them gently against our leg the bottom of our leg if you're wobbly if you haven't got your balance just toes down no big falling over and big crashes control your body so try again, well done. See if you can, some people might want to try lifting their leg even higher. So up here on their body. Balance there, but be very careful not to push against your knee. So don't push your foot here against your knee because you can damage your knee. So the bottom of your leg or the top or keep your toes on the floor or even put your toes on top of your other toes whatever helps you to balance and it's a good one to practice when you're not doing a yoga class see if you can get better and better okay so we're going to give our legs a little shake see if we can do our tree to the other side see if it's better at this side is our legs stronger are we different in our balance so strong straight trunk the tree up on your tiptoes, turn your leg out to the side, hands on your heart. If you prefer, you can grow your branches tall, you can spread your fingers wide. Whatever helps and feels comfortable for you. Squeeze your tummy muscles, pull in your shoulders and your back, strong and straight. Oh, give everything a shake. Well done, everybody. Now around the castle, there would often be a moat 
as well, like a river, but dug around the outside to create a barrier so it's not easy to cross so that people not wanting to attack can't get to the castle easily. They need to be more creative. So a big wide moat like a river. So we'll do our river pose, sitting on our bottoms with our legs long and straight and point your toes up to the ceiling. Try and make your back as straight as you can, squeeze your tummy muscles. And we're going to be the water in the moat. So stretch your arms straight up to the sky, but twinkle your fingers like running water. And then we're going to all the way down our body to our toes. Try and keep your legs straight. Try and lean over and reach your toes if you can or get as near as you can. Wiggling your fingers, we're going to go back up like water lapping in the moat. That's it, a moat would be very deep to make it difficult to cross. Well done everybody. Now, if you lived in the castle, you would want to cross the moat and you would need a bridge. But if you leave a bridge there all the time, then other people could cross it too, your enemy. And so they came up with a special bridge, a drawbridge that could be up when they didn't want anyone to come in and they could lower it down across the moat when they wanted to come across. So the bridge is a moving bridge, a drawbridge that you can draw up and let go back down and draw it up. So we're going to see if we can be a bridge first because we should know how to do a bridge. So we have our feet flat on the floor, our knees bent and we lay back with our body flat on the floor. So your knees are pointing up to the ceiling. You put your hands flat on the floor by your bottom and push your tummy uh, and your back gently up to the sky. Keep your feet flat on the floor. Try and keep your knees the same distance apart and your hands can just push against the floor to help you lift a little bit higher. See if we can stay in our bridge. So this is when the drawbridge is down over the moat, letting the, the prince, the princess, the king and all his soldiers and all their subjects cross into the castle. But when they've crossed safely, and they don't want to have anyone else crossing over without permission, they would close the drawbridge back up again. So we're going to stay as we were, hands on the floor, backs on the floor, knees bent. But now we're going to do a position that we call the plow, but in this case, it's the, the drawn up drawbridge. So we're going to close the drawbridge. So first of all, see if you can raise your feet to the ceiling and then I'm going to do a little rocking motion so that my feet point back a little bit and my bottom is lifted right off the ground. I can even use my hands to gently support my bottom and my back so that I can push my feet further over. Let's see if I can make my legs go straight and they've gone back behind me. So we're in a sort of half shoulder stand. Now gently, gently trying to keep your legs straight and just looking up at your knees so you're not twisting your neck. Can you lower your feet as far back as you can? You might even be able to get all the way to the floor. But if anything hurts, you don't push it too far and you practice, you could just stay here. You could even try and lift your feet all the way up to the ceiling in a full shoulder stand, something to practice when you're not doing a yoga class. Rock forwards and we're just going to bend our back the other way because we've bent it all the way that way. So we're just going to sit with our knees bent again and can you just flop over your knees so you're stretching your back so you can get your chest and your tummy to touch against your legs and then just relax forward. Well done everybody. And that was our drawbridge and a tricky yoga move as well. If you managed to even get your, your legs up in the shoulder stand, well done. And if you could get all the way over to touch the floor, 
amazing and something to practice for a bit of fun but always be careful try and look at your knees when you do it so that you're not twisting your neck side to side you're keeping your eyes up straight in front of you okay well done now when they draw up the drawbridge they would also want to protect the big door that was there and they would slide across a metal grid to make it even more secure so another door made of metal called a portcullis and so we're going to see if we can be a portcullis so more of a sort of for us a star shape like we're making our body as big as we can to cover the entrance of the castle so big wide legs big wide arms spread your fingers stretch through your fingertips stretch through your toes pull in your tummy and see if you can be a strong portcullis protecting the castle from the enemy now who would live in the castle well let's have a think definitely a princess so why don't we try being a princess now this is a, a trickier move and it's a yoga pose called a dancer and it's a balance on one leg so you have to be careful and have a way of just putting your foot down rather than falling over if you lose balance and also and because we're practicing at home you can practice and just hold on to a wall the sofa a chair anything you can just touch your mum your dad just to give yourself balance if you find you might wobble and then practice until you don't wobble too much anymore so we're going to be a dancer i'm going to turn to the side so that you can see uh, we're standing tall like with the tree we're going to group uh, root one foot to the floor that's going to be the leg we balance on and then we're going to put one uh, set of toes onto tiptoes and we're going to just see first of all can we lift our knee in front of us and put that down can you bend your leg back so that your foot is sticking backwards and can you reach your foot and just balance there you can just practice that but if you're feeling quite quite balanced and I'm looking in front of me to get my balance what you can then do is you can raise one arm and you can try to push your back foot back and lean forward until you are balancing like a dancer and I can just touch this wall to help me and I can stretch my leg even higher and then I can practice taking my arm away and seeing if I can still balance and then I'm going to put my foot back down and give my legs a gentle bend and I'll see if I can do it uh, from a front view so that you can see it there so I'm going to switch legs see if I can balance on my other leg and just lift your knee in front just to get your balance practice and then see if you can hold your foot behind get your balance can you reach up and forward and then can you bend your body forwards reaching out with your arm and can you push your back foot Ooh, I've got a wobble so get your your balance push your back foot back and hinge forward and see if you can hold that position if you're wobbly touch something Put your foot down, have another go. And there's our princess. Well done, everybody. There would definitely be knights. Who doesn't love a knight in the castle? So we're going to see if we can be a knight with a sword and a knight with a bow and arrow. So we're going to be in our warrior position, in this case, our knight. So I'm looking at the, the length of my mat. So I'm going to step one foot forward and one foot back and have my legs strong and straight and my body following the line of my feet like this. So if you're facing me, you stride one foot forward, one foot back and your body facing forwards. The reason I'm going to turn back to the side is so that you can see exactly what happens and you can see what it looks like and then I'll turn back forwards for the second leg. So, we're striding one foot forwards, one foot back. Strong straight legs. 
the leg that's forward, the same arm at the same side can shoot forwards, the other arm can go back. And then if we bend our front knee and keep our body tall, we can bend forward in this strong knight's pose. If we now take this front arm and place it on our hip and take our back arm and imagine holding our sword, we can look forwards and swish up to one side, swish the other side, swish, swish like a knight in battle. You could even take your hand off your hip and imagine holding a shield and swish, swish, swish with your sword. Well done everybody. So I'm going to straighten my legs, move my feet back together, have a little walk on the spot to stretch my legs back out again. And we're going to put the other foot forward this time. So try and remember which foot went forwards before and we're going to put the other one forwards this time. So a different stride, stretching a different leg. Okay, I'm moving forwards this time for you to see. And this time we're going to be a knight who shoots arrows through the battlements, through the crenels, the holes that he could see, or even through some arrow slits, those ones that are like a cross shape, so that you can shoot an arrow that way, but someone shooting back would find it very hard to get one through to you. So we're going to be a knight, uh, an archer. So, straight legs, strong, body pointing forwards, the leg that's pointing forwards, the same arm shoots up. So the one that's pointing back, that arm shoots back. Bend your front knee. You can put your hands so that you can look along that front hand. Just check your back arm is not down, but it's up behind you. Strong and straight. Front knee bent, back leg straight. But now we're going to shoot some arrows. So we stay with our legs in this position. We bring our back arm round and we imagine we're holding a bow. And with a bow, you hold the wooden part and you pull back the string. And you look over your thumb and we're going to shoot our arrow forward and both arms shoot forwards. Okay, so we'll try again. Both arms forward, back up strong and straight, front knee bent. Pull back your bow. One, two, three, back beyond your ear. And then, pew, shoot it forwards. Let your arrow fly. Let's do one more. Hands forward, pull back your bow. One, two, three, pew. And let your arrow fly. That's brilliant. Now there would also be a prince and lots of other knights who might ride on a horse out to battle. So we're going to ride a horse now. So to be a horse we have our feet a little bit apart, not too wide, a little stride apart. And we're going to put our hands on our hearts and bend our knees. This is really a chair pose but we're going to see can we sit on a horse and how far down can we sit in a squat but try and keep your back as straight as you can. Now it might lean forwards a little bit but try not to scrunch up, try and keep everything strong and straight. Sit down on your horse. Now, if you were riding a horse, you would actually gently move up and down. You can do a neigh if you feel that way. Neigh. You could even crouch down on your horse hold your shield and your sword and as you're riding swish your sword whoosh, 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 whoosh. and I don't know about you but I can feel that here in my thighs stretching and working those muscles and making them stronger each time we do it. So well done. What if we were in a real castle and the bottom part of the castle, inside the walls, is called the bailey. It's where all the, all the workers would have lived. The people who made the food, the cooks, uh, the butchers, the farmers growing food, 
the people cleaning the castle, the people looking after the prince, the princess, the king, the queen, all would be there, all would need food. And because there's food there, there would be lots of animals, some to eat and some there to eat the grain, the things that we grew in the fields. So there would be dogs, maybe to help with hunting and to bark and warn when someone was coming. Rats living, eating all the scraps of the food. Cats to chase away the rats. And chickens and pigs to help provide some of the food that the, the knights would need. So let's see, first of all, can we be a rat? So our child's pose or our mouse pose, we're going to be a rat. So we kneel on our knees, your bottom stays on your feet. Just touch your feet with your hands or hold your toes if you want to, and just gently round your body forwards, keeping your bottom on your feet until your head touches the floor. And then just try and relax your shoulders, your hands, and be a rat. So now we need a squeak, squeak, squeak. Be a rat living in the castle. And as soon as they squeak and make noise, the cats would know. And so we're going to be a cat on our knees and our hands. Try and make sure that your shoulder and your elbow and your hands, your wrists are all in a line so that you're strong, your body's strong. So to be a cat, we would look around, breathe in, and when we breathe out, we're going to stretch like a cat and push our shoulders and our back up to the ceiling while our head looks down to our knees. Meow. So we can move our back back down and breathe in. And then when we breathe out, meow, and push your shoulders up round them, up, round your back up, push your tummy up, and then breathe in, and breathe out. Meow, meow. And no doubt, a cat meowing would get the dogs all excited, thinking something was happening. So I'm going to stay here on my hands and knees for a minute, but I'm going to move my hands a little bit further forwards. I'm going to lift my toes and hook them so my toes are touching the mat so that I can then just push my bottom up to the ceiling, straighten my legs and let my head go strong but between my arms. See if you can push your heels down, they don't have to touch the floor, but straight legs, straight arms and can you stay there and be a woof, 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 a dog in the castle running round excited, no doubt scaring the chickens. Let's see if we can be a chicken in the castle, laying eggs for the king. So can you go onto your feet? And we're going to go into a squat. So you need your feet a little bit apart, maybe pointing slightly outwards so that you can bend your knees and squat down to the ground, but your feet stay flat. So if you have to move them slightly to one side until your feet are flat on the floor, and your body, your chest, your head, they're raised and strong. Now a chicken has something called a comb on the top of its head, like a red fluffy bit, makes it look a bit strange. So we're going to use our hand to make our comb. And then it has a wobbly red bit under its chin. Most chickens anyway, not them all, but we're going to be this kind of chicken. And then can you make a chicken noise? <coughs> You might even be able to be a cockerel, so see if you can raise your head a bit taller. And then can we do a cock-a-doodle-doo, cock -a -doodle -doo. Well done, everybody. And we finally mentioned a pig. And pigs really like mud. So we're going to imagine we are a pig rolling around in the mud inside the bailey of the castle. So we're going to lie on our backs with our head on the mat on the floor. And then if you um, open your legs wide, but keep them bent and then reach between your legs with your hands. And then can you lift your head to reach up and hold your feet? So I'm going to keep my head lifted 
and strong and I'm holding my feet to my knees are bent I'm going to have a little roll around like a pig having a great time rolling in the mud <coughs> can you do a pig noise or a oink 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 you could tip all the way to one side Ooh, all the way to the other side you could put your head down if you want and have a little rock and a roll backwards and forwards if you like having a great time rolling in the mud so I'm going to come up to sitting and I'm going to think about the last animal that may live in a castle certainly a fairy tale one and that would be a dragon let's see if we can be a dragon it doesn't have to be an unfriendly dragon your dragon might be a kind dragon but it could live in the castle with the king protecting the castle if you like so we're going to go on our knees but tall so not sitting on our knees but kneeling up and you take one of your legs forward and put your foot flat on the floor so you're making this sort of square shape here between your knees and your legs on the floor okay so get your balance and then we're going to see can we shoot our arms up like dragons wings raised up ready to fly now we're going to do a dragon breath so we're just going to breathe out first like a noisy but not a big roar we might do two big roars at the end so we're going to breathe in and then lean forward and bend that front knee and and back I'm going to move my foot a little bit further forward so I can go even further with my lunge. So stretch up to the sky, breathe in. <sighs> like you're breathing fire. Back up, breathe in. <sighs> like you're breathing out fire. We'll do one more breath in, but this time if you want to roar, you can. So stretch up tall, breathe in. <sighs> Brilliant. Well, we've done the dragon on one side of our body. Let's do the other side. So back onto your knees, the other foot forwards, bent here, arms straight up to the ceiling, breathing in, breathe fire. Go back up, breathe in, and back up and breathe in. I hope you've enjoyed our journey into a castle and that you've learned something new along the way. But now it's time to rest and relax. If you would like a teddy for your relaxation, now's the time to get it. I'm not going to use a teddy today. Uh, I'm just going to use my hands resting on the floor and relax in that way. Okay, so we're going to come down to the floor, ready to relax. And we uh, let your feet flop out to the side, your legs long and straight but relaxed, your elbows, your hands resting into the floor, or if you've chosen to use a teddy, you can hold it gently on your tummy or your chest. And we can just breathe in. Imagine what living in a castle would be like. Would it be noisy with all the animals, the blacksmith making weapons, all the people busy with their jobs, keeping the castle running? the sounds of the moat, running water, all the voices, what about the smells, the castles didn't have toilets like we have, 
the animals all living in the castle. It's really smelly, especially pigs. Breathe in and imagine what it would smell like. Fires burning. Food cooking. Imagine touching the castle wall. Cold stone. Old metal of armour, the warm sun on a summer's day, the soft fur of a dog or a cat. So now we're just going to open our eyes and be ready to move, but we're not going to move. not going to move fully just yet we're going to wake up with a gentle breathing exercise so I'd like you to bend your knees and make sure you've got enough room that you can put your arms out to the side so I'm just going to make sure I've got room for that so we're going to bend our knees and just have your arms by your side near your bottom breathe in and when you breathe out just lift your arms up till your fingers point to the ceiling and you can turn your hands to look at each other. Breathe in and let your arms go out to the side, strong and straight till they touch the floor. Breathe out, hands back up to the ceiling. Breathe in, hands behind you to the floor as you breathe out. Breathe in back to the ceiling and breathe out all the way down to the floor so we'll try that one more time we breathe in and don't do anything then we breathe out to the ceiling breathe in arms out to the side breathe out arms to the ceiling breathe in arms behind and breathe out and we can bring our arms all the way back down to the floor put your hands and your feet in the air just give everything a gentle shake ready to sit up and sing our long time sunshine song at the end of our journey are you ready may the long time sun shine upon you all love surround you and the pure light within you guide your way on. May the long time sun shine upon you, all love surround you, and the pure light within you guide your way on. May the long time sun shine upon you, all love surround you, and the pure light within you guide your way on guide your way on guide your way on put your hands together for the end of our session namaste thank you everybody and i really hope to see you again soon goodbye <laughs>